Hi guys, I'm Beth. And I'm Jason. And this is Happy Tales RV. Today we're going to discuss the first 10 items that we purchased for our fifth wheel. The first item is snap pads. It's a composite material that snaps right to the leveling feet. These are the snap pads. Um, they are a hard composite rubber. And you can see there's a little bit of a lip up here. Basically that lips up over these. It's a great stabilizer. Um, this is one of our top 10 must-haves. We really enjoy it. There's no need to put boards down or put the buckets on or the Lego blocks. These things come down. You got plenty of, of travel in your hydraulics. And um, as you can see on a gravel pad, they're nice. And uh, nice and solid. So we definitely enjoy those. Number two. Number two is going to be our power adapters. It's going to be our cords, our adapters, everything that you need to plug into different types of pedestals. Okay, so this is a surge guard. This is going to protect your fifth wheel, your travel trailer, even your motor coach from any type of power surge that might occur on the pedestals, whether it be 20 amp, 30 amp, or 50 amp. This one is for a 50 amp, which is what our fifth wheel is. These are kind of a must have. You want to make sure that you have some type of protection. And we bought this before we even got our coach because we knew that we would want this. They're super easy to put in. Basically, you just cut your 50 amp in half. Obviously, make sure you're unhooked from your pedestal. And then um, have your battery disconnect and hooked as well. You snip it and then you strip it down. You put one side in here. Line goes to your plug and load goes towards your, your uh, disconnect panel with all your, your breakers and everything in that. Uh, which is this nat's, rat's nest right here. So um, this ours is hidden just because of the way it... it uh, it came to so we have a remote wire here that goes up to a display I will show you that display here in just a moment but these are a, a must-have and these are sold separately by the way but here is our display and you can see if there's faults and what you're going through you can cycle through everything so alrighty first one I'm going to show you is the adapter that we bought off for our main line coming off the camper it is a um, basically a 90s it, so these guys they did change the design but these used to come straight out and so we bought this again thinking that it was going to be straight out to help alleviate the pressure off of the top of this outlet but this is probably one of the big ones you want to get you want to have your cord coming straight down and then this is probably a 25 foot cable 50 amp it is heavy but that's what you get with it that's it So these are kind of the, the other options that we picked up. This guy here is a 50 to 30. So in case you don't have a 50 amp hookup, you can still utilize everything except for your three air conditioners to a 30 amp. And then if we just needed something to run the lights and no AC, um, you would go a 50 to 110. The next thing we got, and you can tell we don't use it, is a 50 to 2 uh, uh it's a, excuse me it's a 50 to a, a 30 amp conversion and then you can amp that down to 110s in case you're mooch docking and you're going to run off of two different um, services that gives you that option to do that as well and then the important thing is the long extension cord so that ties into your original 50 amp um, in case like what we have here is our power port is towards the front of the RV and if the pedestal is towards the back you might need it or if you have to go to the other side for some reason if you try to buddy camp or something it gives you that option to run that you could probably buy down the road but you will eventually need it and the last thing that I have um, are these little testers so these you just plug right into this is a 30 and this is a 50 amps you plug into your pedestal 
um, and it's going to tell you you know if you have a reversed polarity on your neutral or your black or you have a bad ground so instead of plugging in your fifth wheel and or your trailer to find out hey we've got bad electricity you can plug this in right off the bat before you go through the hassle of trying to unhook and everything and then plug it in so usually we'll roll right up we'll plug it right in as soon as we get in there that way we know if we have good power or not and it, it solves a lot of headache and that is part of your power number three is the sewer system we're going to talk about the adapters the hoses and the t-gates that all tie into that that system we've talked about it before these T gates. These T gates are super important. Uh, you could drain your tanks completely and put your cap back on right here and then pull 10 feet and this hose is or this pipe is now full of water. So you don't want to have a a brown surprise when you pull that cap off. So definitely 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 T gates. And while we're on the subject if you buy a new RV, you're not going to get any new black hoses. There's not going to be any hoses that come with it. So you'll want to get, I would say, depending on how big your RV is and where your outpost is. Like ours is right in the middle. So I run almost every single time at least 40 feet. Depends on where the sewer tap is, but you'll want at least, again, depending on your size, you'll want the length of your RV and black hoses. That's just my personal opinion. I personally carry 50 feet of hose just in case. So, and I do keep those in a separate container as well as adapters. You're gonna need this adapter. You're gonna need, if you have two um, outposts, you're gonna need a Y connector. You don't have to have it. You can definitely go back and forth, but it sure makes life a lot easier. And then you'll need a elbow into the sewage drain. And this guy will go from like a four inch to a three inch to a two inch. It's threaded on the inside. Also, a lot of states require you to have your uh, pipe elevated off of the ground. I think Florida is one of them. So you need to keep it off the ground. Uh, you'll also need, I believe in Florida as well, a donut they just sell them you can pick them up at walmart amazon you name it um and that just that makes a better seal around here again i have another t gate here and you'll see i have two different size hose or style of hoses um i personally don't like these guys again it's all personal preference the nice thing about these is they don't accordion up like this but they tend to twist and they don't you're not able to get the full length out of them, so I've actually replaced these, so when we're done here, we'll get rid of these guys and keep one as a spare. But I do like these Rhino hoses. Again, personal preference, it's just something I like. We're gonna kinda continue on with the uh, sewer end of this. Um, we we're talking about adapters. And sometimes when you've got a dual uh, drains, you can come across and you've got two ports. So you need to have two of the drain elbows with the adapters. So that goes back with the adapter section that we had. And along those lines for number four, we're gonna go with the water. So this will be all of our intake. This will be our, our hoses, our Ys, everything that we do to bring water into our unit. So here's another must. It is a water regulator. Get yourself a good regulator that you can read on um we keep ours up here just because it's cold where we're at um along with that you want to have some good 90 degree elbows you can get these on amazon we got these at home depot actually um, i have some quick disconnects i just use these on my flush tank um, because this guy's usually just all hooked up uh i also use this guy here a little insulator it just helped out a little bit. You know, it is a heated compartment, but still. And then I also use a Y. I like the brass Y. Uh, we had a 
kind of a hybrid plastic one thing broke on the very first day so we tend to use that we also use a zero G uh, hose we have three of these three different water hoses um, a 25 foot we have a 50 foot of the zero G's and then we have a heated hose which we use when we're in really cold temperatures that is pretty much the water door. number five is the Vire air compressor this is handy to check the tire pressure in your tires for the fifth wheel the tow vehicle or even add air pressure to the airbags if you don't have an onboard uh, air compressor Okay, so this is our Viair air compressor. This thing is awesome. Uh, it's a little spendy, but it is, you don't have to get this one. You can get any type of air compressor, but you definitely want to have one. I do recommend these guys. They make a great product and it is very handy. Uh, nice thing about this guy is it comes with a nice big gauge with a flexible line or you can use a hard line with a dual foot inflator and that just snaps in and out of here and then this is the compressor so the compressor is nice because it is good size it's got a nice rubber base on it it's got isolators down here so um, all the way around it, it, it's awesome the big thing that i like this is you know your your line you fit this end to here and then this to your your filler but the nice thing is they also give you another one so it's an adapter um, or I should say an extension not an adapter so you can run this like I hook this up to my batteries on my fifth wheel and I can run all the way around hit all four tires and hit the four tires on the pickup as well as well as on my um, airbags so Vire, that's what we use, and that's what we like, and that's what will be down in the description. Alrighty. The next item, what would that be? Number six? Number six. Alright, number six, we're going to talk about the Mopeka LP tank monitoring system. And we'll, I'll go over that, and I'll show you. It's app-based. It's really cool. Um, here is our 30-pound. Mopekas actually mount to the bottom of these guys. And this is kind of the sending unit. Um, it's got two magnets on it, and then this is your sensor right here. And like I said, I will put it down here on the bottom. And let's see, you can see it mounted there. That's on the bottom of the tank. And then it sends a Bluetooth signal to your phone and lets you know the level of, of your tank. Okay, so I was going to show you real quick on the Mopeka app. Um, I have it in my RV, and it's this guy right here. I just click that and you can see that this is what this is the older style they now have a, a newer style but this is the we've had this probably six years um, we love this we use it a lot but you can see it updates instantly my left tanks at 69% my right tanks at a hundred percent so this is what the app looks like it's very accurate um, and it's nice you don't have to guess or you know, unfortunately, if you do run out of propane and you're like, oh, crap, if I'd only known. Well, here you go. Here's your only note. So this is the Mopeka uh, LP indicator. Number seven is the Motorite slide. This is nice because it slides out of the basement and you can put stacked totes on it and see what is in those totes if they happen to be clear. Okay, so this is our Moride slide. Uh, we had originally purchased this for our 310 that we ended up not getting. Nice thing about the Moride is it comes pretty far out. You can see, like so. And we got these totes from Home Depot. I think they were, I don't know, 15 bucks or something. The reason we went with the clear ones is you can kind of see what's in each tote. And then I also got um, these pack-out boxes for tools, odd and, odds and ends of tools. That's kind of something that you need. But the nice thing is, like I said, you can access it from this side. 
Or we'll sneak around to this other side real quick. And it rolls out this way. So, like I said, this is our Morite slide, and we absolutely love this thing. It is, it is, in our opinion, one of the nice must-haves. All right, so number eight. <laughs> Number eight, we're gonna go actually go inside and we're gonna show you the appliances. Uh, we bought uh, a few different appliances for cooking and stuff of that nature and why we use those. All right, well, this guy here is our air fryer. Uh, Kasori, I guess is what it's called. I'm not too keen on the name of it, I'm not quite sure. Um, it has a bunch of presets on this side. Um, the reason we went with this, we had an Instapot air fryer and it had a flip down basket this just seemed to have really good reviews on it and it had a basket uh, which we really liked so that's the air fryer that we went with we have just a little keurig one shot coffee guy and the instant pot now the instant pot we uh, by accident actually got the instant pot pro and this thing is way cool um, we've enjoyed it a lot more the um, Old style, you could hang this thing up here, but now they actually have grooves in the um, back of it to where you can hang the lid in there. It has a uh, new diffuser on the back for your steam. Uh, the starch cup is actually bigger right here. And it has a really nice display on it. We used to have the eight quart, this is a six quart. We actually downsized, we didn't want to bring the big one with us, so we downsized, and like I said, we, we got fortunate and got this guy. So these are the appliances that uh, we recommend. Uh, they're not super expensive. We do have a link down in the description on our Amazon for these guys. Uh, we hard boil eggs in, in the air fryer, believe it or not. Uh, we've done it in the Instapot as well. We found that the uh, air fryer works pretty good for that. You know, we're, we're trying new things on that. It's always healthier. Um, and, like I said, when you're hooked up to a site's electricity, you're using that instead of propane. So that's why we kind of went with it, and uh, Beth and I really enjoy that guy. So, there are our air fryers. Or our appliances, rather. Number nine is the mattress, and we're going to explain why we upgraded our mattress in our fifth wheel. The Mattress Insider. So that's the company that we purchased our king size RV mattress from. This is a complete memory foam mattress. What we got when we ordered was probably as thick as this little green band here. It was um, about four inches. And we were surprised because when we first sat on it, you know, it was wrapped in plastic and it felt okay. So we figured out when we get the plastic off, it'll be much more comfortable. And I'll be honest, it wasn't bad for the first couple nights, but then we started noticing that we had a crater in here and the crater in over here. And um, I'll be honest, uh, Chad and Tara from Changing Lanes had mentioned that they got this mattress and they loved it. So we started doing a little bit of research, and sure enough, um, we decided to go with it, and we love it as well. It is a fantastic mattress. It is very, very comfortable. Um, we, we almost fall instantly asleep and get a full night's sleep without a doubt. Um, this guy is, is pretty solid. Let me kind of pull it up here so you can see. So... You know, it is a, a nice mattress. Um, it's about 11 inches, and we love that guy. It is so very comfortable. Nice memory foam on it. So, and that again, that company is called Mattress Insider. And last but not least, our wonderful number 10, we're gonna talk about our tension rods and why we use those, where we use those, and uh, everything that goes along with those guys. So I just put one of these up real quick. We normally have one here or a set of one here and another set that goes across here. Um, 
tension rods. The only reason that we put these is there's there's really no detents on these drawers. So they, you know, you make a corner enough, they could pop your door out, which we've actually had happen before. Um, you can see here, before we put the rods on our first trip, um, because we didn't do this. We did the other cabinet, which I'll show you here in a minute. But these guys, uh, I definitely must have. You'll save a lot of agony and a lot of damage, whether it's cabinets or dishes breaking. So, um, yeah, definitely tension rods. And I will show you these. Okay, so we kind of crisscross. Again, we're just put these up just for uh, to show you. Um, these do kind of move around, but with doing this, um, they don't tend to open up. Now, to be fair, we also take Velcro and we have these little, uh, excuse me, sorry, I'm doing a horrible job of videoing. We have these little Velcros. They're just wire tie Velcros. And we just Velcro these door handles together. Um, just an added thing. And kind of a little bonus for you guys. When we were starting out, we were like, man, we don't, we don't want to be eaten off of plastic. You know, this is our, our home. Um, this is something that we're wanting to, to live. We want to live normally. We want to eat normally. We don't want to be eaten off of paper plates and off of, um, you know, plastic wear. But we figured everything's going to break. You know, all our glass, our glassware is going to break. Well, Corel is amazing. This stuff is durable. I mean, it is really good. Um, we actually have a couple sets of these. We just, because it's just Beth and I, we just have the four up right now. We have some more down in the basement. And we're back. Now we're going to talk about a few items that we wanted to throw on this list that we really, really use that we feel need the recognition. And so the first one is dehumidifiers. This guy here is one of the two dehumidifiers. We have the same exact model. Um, this one we have in the kitchen. This one we sometimes move from the bar to the uh, living room, depending on you know where we feel. I just turned it on. Uh, when I turned it on, it said 35. Usually we get it down to around 20s and we'll shut it off. As you can see, it's it's going down. Um, this guy is nice and small. It's not that big. It's probably 16 inches tall by probably 6 inches deep and probably 12 inches wide. It's, it's a nice little unit. It works very well. And how about number two? Number two is by far our favorite. We just recently put this guy in and we wish we would have done it a long time ago. That's a shower head. And what's okay, that? so this is the shower head that uh, we put in here. This is the Evolution head. Um, it has several different settings. It has six settings, I believe. You have this part as one, then you have the center coming out as one. You have kind of a waterfall up here, a nice little massager here. Um, these guys kind of go back and forth. Uh, it's a nice little shower head. This is kind of what was up there before. Um, when we bought this unit, we're like, oh, cool. It's got, you know, it's got the shower head up here. It's got these guys here. It's got this here. Um, we just didn't get a lot of pressure out of it for one. And we were using a lot of water. So we tried it and this is one of those things we wish we would have tried a long time ago. Yes, they don't have it in the, you know, the rub bronze, but I'll tell you what, I, I don't care. This thing works great. Uh, we save water. The hot water lasts a long, long time compared to, you know, the other time you'd be like six minutes, you'd be out of, out of water, if that. Um, now, you know, we finish up before we're out of hot water. We're definitely not filling our gray tank as much. So it's a win-win. And how about lucky number three? Lucky number three is my favorite. It's a space heater. So this is the, one of the little space heaters that we purchased. We actually got this guy from Lowe's. Um, 
it's uh, oscillating you know it does a really good job of just keeping a, a base heat even even with running the fireplace um, and, and sometimes we don't even run the fireplace we just run this guy um, and it's nice it's a ceramic heater and it'll oscillate back and forth and then it'll keep this room you know depending on how long we run it we can get the room up to about uh, 68 to 72 somewhere in there the more slides that you have on your unit the less efficient it is and let's face it these things aren't that efficient to begin with so you're basically cutting big holes in your in your trailer so you know you got one here we've got five slides on this thing so and this is the low point as our living room is the low point so it does get the coldest out of the whole fifth wheel so and last but not least I know we said we only had three but this guy really needs to be recognized we picked this guy up from um, Kyle and Renee over there at uh, happily ever Hanks Go check them out we'll have a link down in the description but this is actually a measuring device and it is so ingenious but it is so awesome at the same token so check this guy out and let us know what you think well you see i have a one inch piece of pvc well this isn't an exercise and i'm not doing irrigation and it's not a cane believe it or not this guy is a measuring device so kyle and renee over there at happily ever hanks uh, we were watching them one day and they pulled this thing out and I was amazed. I was like, oh, what a brilliant idea. So we stole a little bit of their thunder, but definitely I will have the link to their video down there in the description. It is simple. Basically, we have camper, we have stove and kitchen, and we have living room. And, well, I covered it up as a, just a crude drawing. And then we went ahead and we made our own stickers. Okay, basically, you put it up against the side of your camper, and then, oh, look, if, let's say this was a tree, we know that our slides are actually past that, so we would have to move over to the left. Um, so for each one, you know, we kind of measured out, and you can see. So it's a great little thing for knowing any obstructions that you'll have, and, you know, always looking up make sure that you don't have a tree land or tree branch uh, that'll be an obstruction but great idea so go check out that video those guys are great okay guys thank you very much for enjoying our video uh, if you have any comments or questions please link them down here in the basement in our little comment section and uh, don't forget to hit those likes you know they don't cost anything also if anything we said was helpful, be sure to subscribe and click that bell for future notifications. All right. Thanks for the time and appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys. Have a great day.